Before you give your remarks, I, I just want to uh, add that a fund has been established in your name with contributions from former students, friends, and members of the St. Joseph's community to benefit students pursuing careers in healthcare professions. Also, I would like to present a gift as a token of our appreciation for the many years you spent both in the lecture hall and laboratory in teaching us comparative anatomy. No, I have this gift. I didn't wrap this. This is wrapped by one of my doors. But we want you to open this down. Yeah, before you make your <laughs> These were all the animals from San Diego. <laughs>
because there were two honors in one day. I want you to pinch me and tell me I'm not green. This is my queen for a day. Flashing by our memories of another celebration. In 1940, a five-day contest at a state home show in Baltimore, Maryland, culminated on my being crowned Queen Maryland 1940. At that event, I curtsied to judges and an audience of a thousand or more in a massive, massive auditorium. Contrary wise, today, I bow to the science, to loyal friends who are entertained me in an elegant ambience. What led up to this May 14 celebration? A January letter arrived from my former anatomy laboratory system and former president of the medical alumni, namely Dr. Joseph Horseman, who I call Joe. The letter expressed the desire of the medical alumni would like to honor me during my usual May visit to Maryland. Immediately, I entered a state of flotation, was about to drop down to earth, but a phone call came from Sarah Quinn, Assistant Vice President in Father Lannan's office. The President and the Board of Trustees would like to honor me at the 2011 celebration. In San Diego, we also experienced a Santa Ana, hot winds blowing in from the desert. It once lifted, lifted my patio umbrella up to the roof of my house. Sarah's message found me being lifted higher in whirlwind fashion, twirling round and round. But mundane demands of life forced me to finally settle down. At this moment, my heart's pounding. I'm certain my blood pressure's elevated. My mouth is so dry I can barely speak. But this anxiety is being tempered thought that there is a doctor in the house. <laughs> without, without further ado, I'm, I must uh, extend to Father Lannan, the Board of Trustees, and the medical alumni my sincere appreciation for this day which will live in my memory forever. Today I've reached the pinnacle of my teaching career. It's been a 92-year journey, including my incubation period. As I look down the hill from the top, I question what enabled me to reach this moment in life. I conclude it was love, the most wonderful human attribute. What is love? It is a feeling which brings forth emotional sensations. But to me, it is more. It's action. It's activity. As the psychologist M. Scott Beck has stated, love is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own and another's growth. I add that extended love can enable another to grow spiritually, politically, socially, culturally, academically, and in so many, many ways. Throughout my presentation, I'll be referring to my accomplishments. I am not a graduate. Instead, I want you to know it was the love from each one of you and many others who's enabled me to fulfill my purpose in life. The first love shower upon me came from my dad and mom, William and Mabel Sifra. I was reared on the farm in Maryland, the oldest of ten children. In the 1920s, there was no electricity on the farm. Under the light of an oil lamp, as I worked on my grammar school homework, Dad read nearby. The next day, Dad would praise me for the good grade I received. It was my dad who, who taught me to love studying and learning. On Sundays, we children were led by Dad over the farm as he mimicked the call of birds, identified them, identified the trees and flowers, and he even let us peek down holes, which often exposed groundhogs. He instilled in me the love of all living things and inadvertently directed me along the biological road. My mom taught me the essential chores of housewife, housewife, but more importantly, the art of mothering. This includes supervision, responsibility, compassion, and unending sacrifice. As a church pianist, Sunday school teacher, director of church artistic productions, her Christian attitude pervaded all her actions. 
which became embedded deeply in me and my siblings. Tonight, my five living sisters, three nieces, and four nephews are here with me. It was my parents who taught us to love one another, to love all mankind, and to love nature. Along the road from childhood until 1948, there were bumps and occasional steep inclines, but helping hands were extended as I passed through graduate school, high school, college, four graduate schools, teaching at five colleges and universities. It was June 1948 when I entered the halls of Barbara. Excuse me, it's important. The atmosphere is quite different here than it is in uh, San Diego, as you all know. It was June 1948 when I entered the halls of Barbara and remained entrenched on Hawk Hill for 35 years. My husband, Carol, and I had come to be interviewed by Father Gray, and we were hired. Father informed me that I was the first full-time female professor in a Jesuit institution east of the Mississippi and possibly the whole USA. I hope I haven't lost number three and just slipped into the wrong position. <laughs> I entered a man's world. 